Release now, patch, later. 1998 was the first year that I can recall uttering those words. I was frustrated as it seemed like PC games had started to lean on this thing called the internet to help keep their targeted release dates. Now it wasn't as though patching PC games was new, but rather the easy distribution of these updates meant developers could compromise a bit on the time spent testing software. Eventually, day one patches, bug fixes, and even changes to help balance gameplay became things consumers expected in this modern era of gaming. But for some systems, patching games that were already in a consumer's hands was not possible. A game released on cartridge, for example, had its data written to a mask ROM with no way to update the software. Sure, games had newer revisions that appeared during their time at retail, but these changes happened behind the scenes and most consumers were unaware of a change unless they noticed something was different between their copy and a friend's copy of the same game. If a game had a known bug that was never addressed, that is how history will remember it. And this brings me to Fazanadu, an action role-playing game for the Nintendo Entertainment System developed by Hudson Soft. Backtracking, shops, weapons and armor, items and inventory are all part of the experience. During your adventure, you may stumble upon a magic item that is simply called Pendant. According to the manual, the Pendant increases your sword attacking power. Strangely, it doesn't seem to increase your attack power. As a matter of fact, it reduces your attack power. It's quite possible that you don't even notice this change and continue to fight your way through the game. Some of you may have never acquired the item in the first place. While some games were released unfinished, others had a fair amount of testing, something that you would expect when it comes to games that cost some money to produce and have no way of being updated after being purchased, at least not without swapping out the consumer's cartridge. Fazanadu may have some quirks to it, but seems well made. Nintendo elected to publish it as a first-party title in the United States. Of course, at the end of the day, nobody's perfect. The Pendant's implementation is bugged. It isn't game-breaking, just an annoyance. In some bit of irony, Fazanadu did receive a ROM revision inside its release window in the United States. Changes were made to the font, perhaps to help with password legibility. It is possible that there are other changes, but I do not know if they've been documented. As for the pendant bug, it remained present in the new revision. The gaming community offers this simple advice when it comes to dealing with this bug. Don't get the pendant. That's, well, that's good advice. Alternatively, you may see those that suggest you get the pendant if you would like an extra challenge. Also fair, there are certainly those that appreciate a greater difficulty in the games they play. But what if you are currently playing through the game, have already acquired the pendant, and wish you hadn't? What is the cause of the bug? Can anything be done? Let's take a look at combat before and after acquiring the pendant. At the moment, it is not in my inventory. I'll attack this enemy and simply count the hits it takes to defeat him. Four hits with the long sword. After acquiring the pendant, that same enemy takes five hits. Interestingly, this item is found inside the Tower of Suffer, which has led several people to speculate that perhaps the pendant is a troll item in the game that is meant to hurt the player's combat abilities rather than augment them. This despite what the manual claims. However, an NPC states that the pendant has been a treasure of the town, but it is best for the town if you keep it. So let's work under the assumption that this is indeed a bug. What happened? The short answer is that the code that checks to see if the player has the pendant in their possession or not is backward. If the pendant is in your inventory, it skips over the logic that boosts your damage by 25%. If it is not in your inventory, it does boost your damage. As far as the logic is concerned, you have the pendant's power turned on at the beginning of the game. After you acquire it, that power is now disabled. It is, for all intents and purposes, backward. Let's say you want a bug fix. What are your options? One modern solution is to patch the ROM after it has been dumped from the cartridge onto a computer. A fix has been around for over 10 years, and it changes a small bit of code to reverse the logic. Alternatively, if you don't want to mess with patching and have access to a hex editor, you can change it manually by loading the ROM, going to offset 38889, and changing D0 to F0. This solution works for those that use emulators, flashcards, or would even consider burning the updated ROM to a chip and swapping out the chip inside their cartridge. But what if you have an original cartridge and don't want to mess with ROMs? Fortunately, the bug fix only involves changing a single byte. That is something that can be done with a game genie. Just use this code and your game will play the same as if you'd patched the ROM file. No pendant power at the beginning, and acquiring it boosts your attack. 
The offset is the same regardless of the release. Japan, USA, USA Revision 1, and Europe should all be able to use the same code. What if you have already picked up the pendant and you don't have a Game Genie? Fazanadu uses passwords rather than a battery to help you maintain your progress. Fortunately, this password system has been reverse engineered. Even better, the community has created password generators that are available online. You can find password generators for several games, including Fazanadu, on the website taskvideos.org. Now obviously this generator gives you complete freedom to fire up the game with whatever you want in your inventory, weapons, armor, items, and the current town you're in, the works. So you could create something from scratch here and cheat to your heart's desire. However, you can also plug in your current password in the top field, leave the box, and it will decode your password into the boxes for the password generator. Once this has been done, simply uncheck the box for the pendant to receive an updated password for your current quest minus the pendant. Now you can continue to play the game without the penalty of having the pendant in your inventory. No patches, Game Genie, or additional hardware needed. I won't do a full breakdown of Fazanadu's password system, but how about an overview with a focus on the pendant bit? If you don't like technical stuff, feel free to skip ahead. Each character in the password is represented by six bits. Capital A is all zeros, capital B is one, capital C is one, zero, etc. So if you took a given character-based password and substituted appropriate bits for the letters, your bit breakdown would look like this. An 8-bit checksum, a 5-bit character count that indicates the number of characters in the password, three bits that indicate where the player saved, four bits for rank, such as hero, and 8 bits for special items acquired in the game, and this is where the pendant indicator resides. After that comes things like flags for various places or events in the game, what weapons and armor are equipped, what is in inventory, etc. If you have a password in the generator field and toggle the pendant checkbox, you can see that the first and fifth characters change in this example, because we are flipping the pendant bit that is part of that fifth character and the checksum has to compensate. How does the checksum work? Split the entire length of password bits into groups of 8, basically break them into bytes. If you end up with only 4 bits for the last number, just stick zeros on the end to get it up to 8 bits. Add all the numbers together. Take the lowest 8 bits of the result. It should equal 0. If you make a change to the bits used for game data down here, the change must be compensated for up here in the checksum, so that adding all the numbers together still results in the lowest 8 bits equaling 0. So if you flip the bit to remove the pendant from your inventory, flip the corresponding bit in the checksum so everything still adds up to zero. Thanks to the password generator on task videos, you don't have to alter your password manually, but you could almost do it in your head, or at least on paper with a character decoder and a bit count list for your input password. Finally, what about bug preservation? Well, that's a strange topic. What do I mean by that? Older games will sometimes see official re-releases in the form of a collection or even as a single title. Generally, that game is wrapped up in some form of emulation of the original platform's classic hardware. Pushing beyond this usually means there is a remake of some sort, which in my mind means it is automatically a different game. But let's say that we've reached the moment of Fazanadu's next release, and it is more or less an emulator-wrapped game. Should the game remain the same as it was when it was originally released, or do we allow for bug fixes? Is it acceptable to fix a 30 plus year old bug by altering a single byte in the ROM, or should that bug remain and frustrate new generations of gamers for the rest of time? Personally, I say fix it. I don't believe there is a blanket yes no response to this question that it should vary from game to game, but in the case of Fazanadu, yeah, fix it. And I understand that this may divide those that want to preserve games with those that want to play them. There is some crossover between these two groups, of course, but updating old games with minor bug fixes is a topic that I feel is almost never addressed. Maximum effort for making a minor bug fix like this would be to create some sort of menu item in the emulator that allows for people to experience it as it was at the time of release, or enable quality of life improvements or bug fixes. And we really get into philosophical differences here. Because if you select option 1, shouldn't save state functionality be disabled for the game? Just how many ways can we divide ourselves on the topic of modernization? What do you think? 
Is there room for refinement of old games, or does the window of opportunity close after initial retail availability? Do you have a different opinion depending on if we are talking about an NES game or a game from the internet era, such as a game for the PS3? Things to think about. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this short look at Fazanadu. There are many more videos on the way like this one, so I hope you'll stop by again in the future. Thanks for watching.